Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We are going to get started. How is everyone? Um, I wanted to do this as a live video. However, I'm not going to Please take, I'm sorry, there we go, too, too, too many questions because I don't want it to be like super, super long and extended because I want it to be focused on the print settings. And so people won't turn away um, when it comes to the print settings. And I just realized that this says Epson 2720. However, I am going to go over this for workhorse printers as well. All right. So in this video, um, in this live session, as you can see from the uh, banner, which the wrong one is up. So let's go there. So uh, we are going to go over my recommended print settings. So you have updated these some um, a little bit different from what was on the cover of our sublimation paper. However, if you decide to use this for other papers, you can use it as well. But I've been doing a lot of different testing um, of settings. I know that um, people have issues with like pizza wheel marks and that's, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> That is because of the way sublimation paper in general is made and the way that the Epson printers are made when it comes to the pizza wheels. So I'm going to break down um, my recommended settings based on testing, the countless testing I have done and the research that I have done to try and find a nice, you know, nice middle ground or like, like perfect, I'm gonna say it's perfect. Nothing is ever perfect, <laughs> but a nice, um, a well-rounded setting for Epson printers when you are using sublimation ink, all right? So if you are new here, my name is Shakia. I am the professor of Silaholic Synonymous, where I teach you guys how to use Silhouette Studio and Honestly Speaking, or HS Ink, which is our product line for submission ink, submission paper, pigment ink, and a lot more in store. I do these live videos and tutorials to help you guys. I like live videos because I can get your feedback from it. And if you have questions, I can answer them at the end of my content. If you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell. And I'll give you some other instructions on what other place that you can find me. Um, throughout social media. But we're going to jump into this one right now and give you guys the information that you came to this video for. Um, I also ask that you guys hit that share button. You can hit share. It allows you to share directly to Facebook, Twitter, all those different places. So share it with a group, share it with a friend, um, tag a friend and let them know to um, come on over and watch the video to find out the settings that I recommend. All right, we're going to go to my Silhouette Studio page. However, these settings are not just for Silhouette Studio. You can use these settings in any design program that you are using. You just have to get to the actual print settings. Um, I did a video before um, trying to, like showing how to access those print settings. I will um, hopefully be able to do it again at the end of this one. If not, I will do a separate video on how to ask, access your printing preferences from no matter which program you're using. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to the program. I also have um, images so you guys will be able to see them a lot bigger because I know that it can be hard to see the small um, settings from at the top. You do want to make sure that you have installed your drivers either with the printer, I'm sorry, with the CD that came with the printer or you're going to go to the Epson website. Easiest way to get to that would be to um, do a Google search of Epson, whatever your printer model name is. So if you are working with an Epson 2720, you're gonna put Epson 2720 drivers. 
Epson 3710 drivers, Epson 4700 drivers, Epson 15,000 drivers, Epson 7720 drivers. So you got to get the idea. You want to Google search that. It's going to take you to the support page and you're going to download the um, drivers for whichever printer you are using. Okay. Um, so that's going to be the first step because you have to get the screen that looks like this when it comes to um, being able to set your settings up correctly. Now, I am using a PC. The settings for Mac is a little bit different. I did reach out to someone, I was supposed to do this video last week, um, but I couldn't, they were doing work here. They're finally finished. So I will get with her um, so that I can do a screen share to show you guys how to do these exact same settings with your Mac because it's the same settings. It's just a little bit of a different setup. So if you are a Mac user and you're not quite sure how to navigate everything, um, be on the lookout for that video. So make sure that you guys hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you're notified when I um, when I go to post that live video for the Mac settings as well. But as of right now, I'm going to show you from a PC kind of perspective. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure if it's just me, if it's coming off blurry to you guys. I have no idea what is going on with the quality of the video that I'm looking at does look a little blurry. I do apologize if it is coming off blurry to you guys. Okay, so once you have your drivers, you're going in Select Studio, you're going to go File, Print. And then you're gonna choose whichever printer you are you know, using. So I have several of them that are here. So I have like my 7720. It does not matter which one you're using because they all have the plain paper setting. So even though I may show from the 7710 or, or 7720 or 2720, it doesn't matter which printer you're using because they all have that plain paper setting. Sorry, right, so I'm going to, for the sake of this, seems like a lot of people have issues with the EcoTank. So I'm going to go to my EcoTank printer. You're then going to hit preferences. When you click preferences, if it does not look like this, you do not have your drivers installed and you need to, you know, do as I said in the beginning and go uh, Google search it and install your drivers. If your preference screen does not look like this, you do not have your drivers install and you need to install your drivers. All right, once you are here, the settings that I recommend, you're going to, of course, choose your document size because we're gonna also show you how to set these as presets. So you're gonna choose your document size uh, so I'm just going to go up to eight and a half by 11. When it comes to the smaller eco tanks, you can do anything that is eight and a half inches wide. So eight and a half by 11, eight and a half by 14. Or if you get the sublimation rolls from um, our shop, you can uh, print longer up to 47.24 inches long. The next one that you're going to click on. So you're going to go here and you're going to click on preferences. It's going to bring up this screen right here. And as you can see, it is plain paper, bright white. And then you're gonna, where it says quality, click on that drop down for more settings. All right, so I'm gonna take that off. We're gonna, we're on plain paper, bright white. You're gonna click on more settings, um, where, where it says quality, just click on it. For the drop down, you're gonna go to more settings. Here, you're going to take the slider all the way up to quality. All right, so you're going to take that all the way up to quality. Once you do that, you're going to come down here um, where it says quiet mode and turn that on. Turn quiet mode on. So all of your settings, once you have this set up, it should look like this. Plain paper, bright white, more settings, and then for quiet mode, it should be on. 
Make sure that you don't have anything turned on in this middle section as far as two-sided printing or multi-page. Make sure those are set to off. All right, once you have that set up, you're going to click where it says more options at the top. Here, you're going to go to the section that says color correction. You're gonna to go to custom and then advance. So advance. Here, where it says color controls, it normally will say Epson Vivid. You're gonna click on that drop down, and you're gonna set it to Adobe RGB. All right, so Adobe RGB. Some people prefer to use 2.2. I find that I get better colors and it doesn't print out so dark using 1.8. But that is a personal preference. If you prefer to use 2.2, it's not gonna be that much of a difference, but to me, it does print out a little too dark. If you want like super, super dark colors, you can go to 2.2, but I am one that prefers 1.8. I find I get great blacks, everything on 1.8. So I changed that to 1.8. You'll also see down here the density. The way sublimation paper is made, well, good sublimation paper, the ink is meant to rest more so on the top and you don't want it to absorb into it. So if you have paper like the Honestly Speaking paper that has a lower release um, temperature and a faster time, it is because the ink is not absorbing into the paper. It is resting more so on top. The way the Epson printers are, they have a lot of pizza wheels in there. So by that resting on top, it doesn't you know, absorb and dry as fast as if you're printing on like plain paper or some of the other papers that require butcher paper and things on the back and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of people have issues with a sub when it comes to this also. You're going to take your density down. Now, it's another place you're going to take it down. I take it down here to be on the safe side. So I, I've kind of done it with and without. I like taking the density down here as well as you'll see on the next setting. So I now take my density down to negative five. Negative five. So it doesn't put down as much ink, especially since we upped it to that quality setting. This is going to take a lot longer to print now. If you were used to kind of using just the plain paper high and it printed out really fast, this is going to take a little bit longer. But I am finding that the longer print times is actually what you want because it gives it time to dry. When I've looked at and researched and looked at the bigger printers, they actually print out pretty slow. Um, and you know, wanting everything to go fast, 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 I realized that that wasn't always a good thing. So with Sublimation, the, the, um, the name of the game is to be patient for it to print out. So we want to slow down that printing. All right, so once we have that setting, you're gonna go ahead and hit OK. And I have come to realize that there really is no, like there's not a really big difference and having high speed checked or having it unchecked. I did some videos. I'm going to post those videos once I kind of edit them out. I will edit them. It printed in the exact same time frame. Like both, like no matter which one I had, like if I had it checked or unchecked, um, the particular print that I was doing, both set, like both prints printed at the exact same time. So it's not affecting really like how fast or how slow it prints. The one thing that I did kind of realize when it, when it was doing it is with the high speed because or bi-directional, um, with it being set, you know, that being on and it putting down the ink in both directions, it tends to put down less ink because it's gonna, it knows it's going to do a second pass. So to me, when I kind of opened up my 7720 and watched it, it was putting down less ink. So it's, you know, how you say when you spray paint, you don't want to just overspray. You want to do light coats. I find that the high speed one is doing less coats, but it does still print out at the exact same time. So it's not going to um, increase or decrease printing time by having high speed checked. And then of course, if you're doing a traditional summation print, you want to have it mirrored. So you just select mirror so that it automatically mirrors in your design 
you will not mirror it. You will leave it the correct way. So that is all of the next settings. So high speed and mirror. So go custom advanced, high speed and mirror. And we did the density over there. All right, once you have this all set up, you're going to click on the top where it says maintenance. All right, under maintenance, you're going to go to extended settings, which where did that go for me? Uh oh, where is that one? Okay, so I, I, I don't have the slide for that one for some reason, but you're going to click where it says extended settings. Once you click there, you're going to get this screen. Make sure that thick paper and envelope is selected. And so it's a little bit of a difference. So for the 2720, the 27, well, actually any of the Eagle tanks, any of them, um, I recommend that you actually take your print density down to about minus 10. Because of the way the Eco tank printers work, um, and the way they put down ink, especially with the smaller ones, like the 2720, you cannot go to that printer and change your drying time. You can't change any of the other settings on there. So especially with that one, I recommend that you actually take it down to 10%. So I know it's really small. You can't see it there, but that says 10%. Just click on your slider, you know, and it will jump to uh, negative five, negative 10, 15. So negative 10%. If you find that you are getting like really, really deep lines and you're seeing pizza wheels, you can try taking your print density down. But um, before you do that, I would just recommend cleaning your pizza wheels. Cleaning the pizza wheels is something that's going to be a part of your uh, daily maintenance when using the Epson printers for sublimation because they have a lot of pizza wheels in there to hold the paper in place. So there's no real setting to where you can avoid not cleaning your rollers. Because of the way sub paper works, you have to make that a part of your maintenance and every so often clean your rollers. I did have a video, or I do have it, on how to do it for workhorse printers because you can lift open the top. And that also works for any of the other EcoTank printers where you lift open the top and you can see the ink. For smaller ones like the 2720, I am going to do an updated video for that one because there is a flap in the front that will allow you to do my like my preferred method of cleaning the rollers. And I'll use like a Lysol wipe or you can use a ribbon soaked in alcohol. So I'll show you guys that. But you wanna have thick paper envelope and for the eco tanks, you're going to go negative 10. But for the workforce printers, negative five works. You can also go to negative 10. It's not going to hurt it, but it doesn't require like because you can slow down the printing on the actual print. Well, I find that negative five works. And now that I think about it, I probably should have taken pictures of the printer um, of the settings on that. Also, if you guys give me a second, I should be able to. Um, I should be able to take a picture of that. I was not thinking, I was just thinking about like the print settings here. Um, actually just be on the lookout for the video. I'll reference this one and then I'll show you guys on the printer um, how to change those. But I do have a video where I show those already on how to go in into your settings, change your drying time and turn on bi-directional, turn on quiet mode. And um, what was it? To slow down your oh, thick paper and envelope on the printer as well. The smaller eco tanks, it does not make a difference, but on the bigger ones, you want to make sure that on the printer, you have thick paper and envelopes selected as well. All right, for the sub printers, some people say that plain paper does not work for them. It still prints out too fast. An alternative setting, if you are using a um, eco tank one, because it does not have the high quality print setting, the alternative would be to use presentation paper mat, not premium presentation paper, presentation paper mat. You're going to leave that set to standard. Do not go to high. It's going to put down an unnecessary amount of ink. You would leave that on standard, still quiet mode, and everything else would remain the same. 
Um, your density, I would take it down anywhere between negative 10, maybe even negative 15. This will slow it down a little bit more, but I still find that it puts down too much ink. I get amazing colors with plain paper, bright white. If you've never seen any of my videos using that setting and how great the colors come out, definitely check out those videos. Once you have all of this set up, we're going to go ahead and um, hit OK on this. It's going to take you back to this screen. You're going to go to either more options or main. It doesn't matter which one you go to. Right here under printing preferences or we have printing presets, you're going to click on add or remove presets. Once you are here, you're going to type in the setting that you are that you just put in. So I don't have a slideshow for this because I have to actually type it out and I'm actually going to save this preset. I'm going to actually, before I do that, I'm going to delete all of my other presets because I've changed them. So I don't want to kind of get confused. I'm going to go through and like resave them all. So I'm going to go in and just delete all of my presets that are here. Actually, this one is already done, um, but I'm going to go ahead and delete them. Those are actually the new ones. That's why I make them green. Green means go. All right. So I have no other presets. I'm going to name this one 8.5 by 11. Um, I don't really, now I don't use any other settings other than plain paper. If you are going to use other settings or you just want to know for yourself, you can put the abbreviations kind of in there. So you can put um, plain paper, so PP, B, W, so plain paper, bright white. Um, and then I just put quality. And then 1.8, you don't really have to put the Adobe. You know that it's 1.8. If you're going to do a different setting for 2.2, go ahead and make that one 2.2 once you go in there and, of course, change that one. And then I'll go minus, um, minus 10 density. So I just kind of put all of the settings in there and then also mirror on because if you're ever going to do a print and cut, so sub to glitter, sub to easy subly, and use the method where you're going to print on summation paper and then put it on your, uh, your vinyl, you do not mirror in your print settings. You have to mirror it on your design program and send it to print regular, like normal, so that it doesn't flip your registration marks as well. So I make sure that I do title it mirror on so that I know which one was on or off, or you can put the other one as, you know, your print, sublimation print and cut, if that's easier for you to understand. And then you're going to just choose a, an, an icon. It's of your choice, any one you want to use. It's going to go to the yellow one and you're going to hit save. That's it. I'm going to close. The only thing that I'm going to change on here is, that's why I like to go to more options. I'm going to uncheck mirror. That's it. I'm going to go back to add or remove presets. I'm going to click on this one that says eight and a half by 11. I'm just going to go to the end and put mirror off and save because everything else is the same. I'm going to hit close. I'm going to go to document size and choose legal. So eight and a half by 14. Add or remove preset. This is the one for mirror off. So I'm going to click on mirror off, but I'm going to change this to 8.5 by 14. I'm going to just make it a different icon because it's a different paper size. And save. Close. Um, my mirror is still off. I'm going to, what's the other setting that I'm missing here? Um, oh, mirror on, duh. <laughs> so we're going to click that, turn it on, go back to add or remove presets. I'm going to click on the one that says eight and a half by 14. I'm just going to turn off to on and then save. 
that's it for this one. Um, well, other than my roles, I'm sorry. So let's go back to that one. So we're gonna go ahead and hit, we hit save. We're gonna close. We're gonna go to uh, document size. If you have not already put your role size in there, if you choose to buy roles, even if you don't purchase sublimation paper roles, if you guys don't know a trick that you can use, I'm gonna do a whole separate video for that. And you want to print longer, you don't want to have that gap and worry about taping it together afterwards. What you can do is tape your sublimation paper beforehand. So you will put them back to back, put a little bit of um, printer, um, painter's tape or masking tape on the back, and you're going to load that in your printer and it will print continuously over both. And now you don't have to worry about cutting that down and potentially having you know, a white gap show because it's going to print all as one. I'm going to have a separate video for that. So even though you're taping it together, you would still use your sublimation roll setting. To be able to set that, you're going to search for where it says user define. All right. Oh, well, let's go here. Um, I, oh, no, I'm sorry. For that one, you have to go back to main. I'm sorry. So you're going to go to user define. There we go. Once you're on user defined, I am going to take a screenshot of this such as you guys can see it. You're going to title this, you know, whatever you want to title it to know that it's your sub paper. I already have one that says HS sub roll, but I'm just going to make this one um, HS ink. Um, and it doesn't matter for sub. If you're using your, your printer as a regular um as a regular printer, you can also use the long rolls. So you can just make this um, roll media um, 8.5 by 47.24, okay? Here, you're gonna change this, you're gonna leave it at 8.5. And for the paper height, you're gonna go 47.24. It tells you that's the max. So let me um, go ahead and take a screenshot of this. Let's go ahead and save that. so that I can show it bigger for you guys. There we go. So you're gonna change your, your name and you're gonna make it paper width 8.5, height 47.24. And then you are going to click on save. So that's gonna pop up right there. You're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And then your document size will now be that. You're gonna just go over to add or remove presets. And you're going to click on any of those. It doesn't matter which one we are set to on. So let's just click up here. We're going to change this to 8.5 by, I'll just put 47. I don't put the 0.24 and mirror on because that's a roll. I'm gonna completely change this icon and I'm just gonna make it the green, um, what is that? Green water pot thingy. <laughs> and we're going to hit save. Um, actually, I want to do that. I want to make it a totally different color. So let's make it the red one. Yes, yes. Overwrite. And so now that is done. And it's rare that you would actually do this as mirror off. You're not going to do that unless maybe you're doing like a really long glass piece because for those, you also do not mirror. If you're going to put it underneath glass, you do not mirror those as well. If you feel like you need a mirror off, uh, a mirror off setting, um, you would go back in and change that and then save it again. But I'm actually okay with this. These are all of my settings for my 2720 sublimation. If you have two printers, so if you have... 
um, a twenty-seven twenty that or a fifteen thousand that's for sub, and a fifteen thousand that's for regular printing. You want to one change your icons and maybe even put on there that it is your sublimation setting and then your regular ink setting. Like so, on your title at the beginning, you would write sub. You know, write sub up there so you know it's your sublimation setting because you're gonna have the mirror. Um, off or on or whatever. And then you can have settings for your regular prints because for those, you'll probably be using like premium matte or, or photo glossy and things like that. But we're focusing on submission. Just wanted to throw that in there that if you have multiple printers, the settings, the presets will show up. So it doesn't matter that they have two different inks in them. They use the same driver and those presets will show up for both printers. So you want to identify which one you click on for sub and which one you click on for regular prints. All right, so I can just close this out. That is saved. I'm going to hit cancel on this because I'm going to go over really quickly to my 7720 sublimation printer, which has the wrong one. Uh, I have to change my name on it. That's that one. And it's the same exact thing, preference. You just have more options as far as sizes. And I need to go in here and delete a lot of these uh, user-defined ones because I don't use like Johnson's plastic paper anymore. Um, and a lot of those other ones, I need to delete a lot of these settings, but it would be the exact same thing. It's just so that I can show you a setting using 13 by 19. I'm just gonna come over here to do that. We're going to go to, um, Main, you're going to choose your paper size. So it would be super B, plain paper, bright white, quality. You're going to click on that, go to more settings, go all the way up to quality, hit OK. Nothing is set here. Quiet mode on, more options, go to custom, advanced, Adobe RGB, 1.8, minus 5. Okay, high speed is on, mirror is on. Go over to maintenance, click on extended settings, minus five, thick paper and envelope, hit okay. Go back to more options, add or remove preset. For now, I'm just gonna put new, cause I have to delete all the other ones, so new. 13 by 19 sub mirror on. And that's all I was saying. I don't have to necessarily put all those other settings because they're going to be my sublimation settings. So I just put new 13 by 19 sub mirror on. So that just lets me know that. And I am going to make this one. I'm just going to make it a cup because I think it's the only one I don't have. And hit save. And I'm going to push that one all the way to the top so that I can delete all the rest of them. All the way to the top. There we go. And some of these I'm going to hide. I don't need any of the presets that came with the printer. So I always just go in there, click on those and hide those because you cannot delete them. But everything else I can delete. But I have to be careful in how I delete mine because I do have like my regular settings on here as well. But I'm going to go through and delete all of these and put these as like my sub settings. So that would be the same exact way. And we're going to hit close. If you're doing the roll, go back to main, user defined there, and you would set it up for your submission paper roll, 12.95 by 47.24, title it, save it, create a preset. So those are the settings that I recommend. I still, I still stand by and live by the fact that you get amazing colors just using plain paper setting. You are going to save on ink so you don't have to purchase as much ink. I know you would think I would tell you to waste ink. I sell ink. I want you to buy ink, but I also want you to be profitable in your business if that's what you choose to do. And if you're just doing this as crafting, you definitely need to save your coins because you're not making any money. So I highly recommend just sticking to the plain paper setting. It's not going to put down as much ink. I will say though, you may see it's not banding lines. It's just the way that it kind of goes down. 
you'll see what appears to be like little. They should be very, very thin and close together. The section should be close together. If you see big ones, then you might need to check your, um, your nozzle checks and maybe run print head cleanings. But you're going to see some lines in there do not fret. They will not transfer. Like you won't see big lines or see those lines when you press them to your textiles or you press them to your hard substrates. You will not see them because it's putting down less ink. It does, you know, you see those lines. It's not filling it all in. But because of how sublimation works, you're not going to see that because it's turning into a gas and it's going to transfer and kind of fill in those gaps. So do not worry about those if you see those lines on there. All right. So I am going to send something to print. Just, well, we'll save that for the next one because someone gave me one for Krispy Kreme and I want to make a, a, a tumble with that one. So I'm going to go back over these settings again when I go out, when I go and print my design for my Krispy Kreme tumbler. All right, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me see if there were any questions um, before I kind of end the live video. Let me see if there are any questions. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. While I go look at questions, I will go to some of the other programs. I said I would do that depending on how much time. We're at 36 minutes. It's a bit of a longer video, but it's great information in it. So I'm going to go to Photoshop, File, Print. And I also want to show you that it doesn't matter where you do those... Um, Wait, what happened now? Um, okay, wait. What did I just do? File. Okay, I don't know what is happening on there. So file print. It doesn't matter where you put where you do the presets at, they will be locked in. So if I go here and I find my 2720 sub printer, where are you? There we go. We're right at the top. And I go to print print settings. The same page comes up. All of those presets that I made while I was in Silhouette Studio are here. I can just click on that setting. So that is how you access your customized like settings. You go to where it says print settings and you're going to get the print, print preference page. If you're on Illustrator, file, um, print. You're going to click where it says setup. It's going to say, ask you, do you want to do all that? So you're just going to say continue. And you're going to get your printer preference page. You're going to find the printer that you want to use. Hit preferences and it will be there. Um, I thought I had Cricut open, but I don't. So let me go ahead and open up Cricut Design Space. Um... All right. All right, waiting for that to come up. While that's coming up, I am going to open up Microsoft Word. I don't know why people use Word to print from it, but people do so. I'll just kind of go there as well. So just going to sign in. Oh, Lord. Oh, are you serious? Oh, come on. Didn't even save it. They've even changed their whole little thing here. So none of my passwords are saved. I guess for this one. Hopefully that's it. Okay, yeah, I got it in there. All right, we're just going to go to blank document for here. File, print. To get to those settings, you're going to click where it says printer properties. Printer properties. You're not going to change anything here. You're going to go to printer properties and your preferences will show up. Well, first also make sure that you do change this to the printer that you want to print from. So if I'm going to go to that 2720, oh, wrong one. That was that one. Uh, 2720, where are you? There we go. 2720, printer preferences. All of my presets are there. So that's how you access it there. And then for 
Cricut Design Space. Let's just go and new project. Upload. Let's upload something that is print. So insert images. And we're going to go make it. Make sure that you do not mirror in the program. Do not select mirror here. You're going to go continue. Send to printer here. You're going to turn off your bleed. Click on where it says use system dialog. Click print. It's not going to print. It's going to bring up your printer preferences. You can choose your printer here. Go to your preferences and your presets. That's the one we just did. It will be there. So that is how you access it in all of like the most popular programs. Affinity and all of those. Just find where it says printer preferences or setup or something like that. And you will have access to all of your presets. And it'll just be a click of a button to go ahead and print. All right. So um, let's go see if there were any questions. Uh, let's see. Yes, these settings will work for the EcoTank 15,000. These are settings that I use no matter which printer. Now, it's not going to affect your colors um, as far as them being 100% accurate because if you don't know, uh, 15,000s and all the printers below that are dye based. And if you're using a sub ink that is basically based off of a pigment ink color profile, your colors are going to be slightly off. We are working to get a color profile to make it so that it matches, but your colors will be slightly off when printing from dye based eco tank printers. You finally set yours up. It went smooth. Perfect. Um, finally got me an EcoTank printer. Can't wait to set it up and use your ink and paper that I have. Awesome. The, 20, the 7720 is an amazing machine. It is my preferred printer. Um, I have a 7720, 7710, amazing printers. It is worth it, surely. You will not regret purchasing one either. If anyone's looking for a workforce, 2710 printer, I ordered one this morning. I was so, yeah, you have to keep checking Best Buy and Epson. The 27, the 7720s are discontinued, but the 7210s are not discontinued. And they go and they put those out. It seems like they're putting them out almost like every week. You can find them on the site, but you have to stock the site. It is exactly like the 7720. Uh, it uses the exact same cartridges. So we sell those. You can go to our website to purchase them. The only difference is it does not have an um, a scanner and fax and copy and all of that. But it is exact same printer, same print settings. And of course, the screen is a little bit different, but you still have access to the same print settings. The Mac settings would be exactly the same, Robert. The screen just looks a little bit different. I do have someone who is going to, I'm going to go live on Zoom with her. And then I will be live again to show you guys the Mac, like directly from a Mac. Um, there's one person that has an EcoTank, so I can kind of show you from there. And then I have someone else that has a workforce printer. And I'll be able to show you from, you know, their computer, the workforce um the workforce settings. So be on the lookout, make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell so that you're notified when I release the Mac one. Hopefully I can get with her today to go live for those settings today. I can't find my second tray for larger sizes. So what do you mean you can't find? I'm not sure what that means. All you have to do is adjust your tray. There is a video on our YouTube channel. So search Honestly Speaking, S-P-I-N-K-I-N-G, um, Epson tray, and it will show you how to adjust your tray. You don't change anything here. Um, now, if you want it to come from a specific one, all you would do is... Um, for paper source, instead of auto select, paper cassette one is the top tray. Paper cassette two is the bottom tray. 
it's probably going there because of the settings that you are using and how you have it set. But you can do your presets. Well, it will default to a particular tray. If you're using four different types of sub paper, so if you have 13 by 19, 11 by 17, eight and a half by 11, and eight and a half by 14, as you change those settings, it will jump around. If you were using premium presentation paper matte setting and not plain paper setting, premium presentation paper matte or any of the advanced settings only print from the top tray or the rear feed. So if you were using those other settings, you are limited to one tray. By switching to Honesty Speaking's recommended settings of plain paper, bright white, you can take advantage of using both trays. So if you were using any of those advanced settings, it only allows you to print from tray one or the rear feed. All right. So that's all of the questions. Hopefully this video was informative for you guys. Don't forget to visit our site, shop.sillaholicsanonymous.com to pick up your Honestly Speaking Sublimation ink, paper, your pigment ink, your chip resetters. If you have an Epson 7720, 7710, 7210 um, expression printers, anything other than the new 7820 and 7840, anything other than those, and I'm sorry, these settings also work for the, um, I'm sorry, y'all, and I can't even turn it off. Um, if you have, if you're using um, the 7820, 7840, it would still be these exact same settings. Yours just will say bi-directional instead of... Um, high speed, which I do have a 7840. So let me kind of close out of all of this. I did forget about the 7820 and the 7840 because that is a newer one. All right, so let's exit out. I have all these windows open. Um, yes, I want to review later. Okay, let's go back to Select Studio. File, print. You're gonna go to 70, not 7840. If I go to preferences, um, paper type. So they have one that says auto select plain paper. Don't use that one. Go to plain paper, bright white. And then for quality, they don't have a more settings. You have to go to high. And I think I'm probably doing a separate video on this because with this one, the presentation paper setting that I told you before might be the better one for this one. I don't use my 78 40 for sublimation. I use it for regular pigment ink. But for this one, they don't have a more like a higher setting. It's just high. Um, but everything else would still be the same quiet mode on. But under more options, it says bi directional. You would choose bi directional and everything else stays the same. The only other difference for this one would be to go and use presentation paper matte not premium, presentation. They took away the high, oh no, they have high quality plain paper. Which one doesn't have it? I think the Eco Tank doesn't have it. You can use high quality plain paper setting set to high, or you can go to presentation paper setting, again, set to standard, not set to high. You would put it at standard. And with that one, uh, for your density, you may end up having to take it to 10. So instead of negative five, it will be 10 if you're using presentation paper matte because it does naturally put down more ink and you want to kind of reduce the amount of ink that it puts down. So if you have a 7820 or a 7840, if you find that you're not getting the results that you want using the plain paper setting, try using presentation paper matte, still on standard, but change your density to negative 10. All right? All right, guys. So thank you guys so very much for joining us again. Don't forget to visit our website. If you're wanting to learn Silhouette Studio in depth, we also have our academy and the memberships are open over there. Uh, videos have started to post on the Design Vault 
Uh, so I'm going through all of my designs that started to post. There is a live session um, this weekend for business. There is a session next week, a live Zoom session next week that's scheduled. So make sure you guys, if you are members, check your community for those links. All right, guys. Thank you guys so very much for joining me. Until next time, guys, have a great one. Be incredible. Peace.